One of the biggest misconceptions across all of the Milky Way galaxy is that the asteroid belt, located between the orbits of Mars and Jupiter, is made up of large, nondescript rocks, without much detail or definition between them, mostly unimportant and uninteresting bodies compared to the rest of our solar system. The truth of the matter is that despite the more boring appearance of our torus-shaped region of the Milky Way, there are a few features in the asteroid belt that still mystify astronomers all over the planet. One such marvellous mystery resides on 4 Vesta, the second largest body in the main asteroid belt, and one of the largest objects in our solar system, not named one of the nine planets or their many moons. Even more perplexing than Vesta itself is its troughs found along the minor planet's surface, potential keys to unlock the secrets of our own planet and the formation of our solar system, possibly solving a new part of the puzzle that resides within our galaxy. In 1802, German astronomer Heinrich Wilhelm Matthias Olbers discovered two palace, the second asteroid ever recorded in history, originally thought to be a new planet before the understanding of what asteroids came to be. Coming only a year after the similar finding of one series, the first asteroid and dwarf planet ever detected by scientists, Olbers was certain the two celestial bodies were leftovers from a planet's demise of yesteryear. Hoping to garner more support, Olbers turned to the expertise of fellow German-born astronomer William Herschel of Great Britain. Olbers argued that further pieces of this proposed planet's destruction lay within the intersection of Ceres and Pallas's orbits, and with Herschel's blessing, he would start his search in the constellations of Virgo and Cetus. Despite Olbers' hypothesis incorrect posturing of the asteroid's origin, his surveys of the night sky proved fruitful in the end. Six years after the initial discovery of Ceres, and three years after the most recent asteroid, three Juno had been found. Olber stumbled upon a fourth asteroid, regarded as a planet in 9th century terms, on March 29, 1807, hiding in the Virgo constellation. Excited at the thought of his theory proving to be true, yet sufficed by his palace discovery in 1802, Olbers passed off the matter of naming his new celestial body to a fellow German peer, this time mathematician Carl Friedrich Gauss, who was responsible for chartering the orbit of Ceres. Gauss was so excited about the prospect of a new planet, he calculated the orbit of Vesta to prove its existence so much faster than the previous foundlings, at a lightning speed of 10 hours. With Vesta officially acknowledged by the astronomy community, Gauss wanted to honour Vesta's potential prowess and named it after the virgin goddess Vesta of Roman mythology. Vesta is the goddess of home, hearth, and family, and a critical figure in Roman mythology, much like the namesakes of the other planets. The name also represents the belief in early 19th century astronomy that even the newly detected bodies, such as Ceres and Vesta, were planets and not asteroids. Vesta was the daughter of Saturn and sibling to Jupiter, Neptune, Pluto, Ceres, and Juno. Jupiter, Ceres, and Juno had already been discovered, and Vesta was thought to be the 11th planet, followed by Neptune and Pluto. These consistent, familial names made sense at the time, and would be today had the minor planets been large enough to be regular planets. Vesta was eventually recategorized as an asteroid once more and more bodies of similar types were detected at a quicker rate by the 1840s. Forty years later, in 1880, the earliest known measurements of Vesta were reported, and continued to be discovered as technology advanced through the 20th and 21st centuries. In May of 2011, the long-awaited space probe, titled Dawn, as part of NASA's Discovery Program, meant to launch various inexpensive space exploration missions made the first ever approach on Vesta. It collected vital data on the massive asteroid for the first time in history, and studied its orbit for a year until September of 2012, when it departed for a similar study on Ceres. The information gathered by Dawn changed everything we knew about Vesta, and its unique makeup and place in the solar system. 
If anything, it displayed the immense evolutions we've made in astronomy since Heinrich Olbers made his initial discovery in 1807 and gave scientists something new to ponder like we never expected. Vesta orbits within the inner asteroid belt located between Mars and Jupiter. One rotation around the Sun on Vesta accounts for just 3.5 years on Earth. Most objects in the asteroid belt are not big enough, nor close enough, to create orbital resonances, yet Vesta does. Orbital resonances occur when large orbiting bodies make gravitational impact on similar orbiting bodies. Vesta has nearly 40 smaller satellites and asteroid fragments that are caught in an orbital relationship, some synced up enough to last nearly 2 million years. Despite being the second largest object in the main asteroid belt, Vesta is only about 28% the mass of Ceres. There are some interpretations of Ceres that claim it joined the asteroid belt after originating beyond the orbit of Jupiter, which would make Vesta the largest original object of the belt. Vesta has a lower density than Mercury, Venus, Earth and Mars, but a greater density than every other rock-based structure in the solar system, except for the Jupiter moon of Io. Its surface area stretches to nearly 900,000 square kilometres, roughly the same land measurement as countries such as Pakistan or Nigeria. The official shape of Vesta is categorised as an oblate spheroid, with a unique basin and protrusion sticking out at the South Pole. These features cemented Vesta as a minor planet rather than a dwarf planet, as well as its lack of hydrostatic equilibrium the balance of external forces that gives planets and their dwarf counterparts perfect spherical appearances. In terms of temperatures, Vesta stays relatively cool, especially in comparison to its two closest planetary neighbours in Mars and Jupiter. At the peak of the asteroid's summer pole, temperatures are estimated to reach minus 20 degrees Celsius, or minus 4 degrees Fahrenheit. If you go south to the winter pole when covered in absolute darkness, Vesta's surface barely scrapes minus 190 degrees Celsius, a frigid minus 310 degrees Fahrenheit. On average, mid-surface temperatures stay between minus 60 and minus 130 degrees Celsius. Without a doubt, the most awe-inspiring yet puzzling property across Vesta's vast existence is its misshapen crust. A surface littered with peaks and valleys formed millions of years ago None of these features loom larger, though, than Vesta's two gargantuan craters and parallel troughs lining the asteroid. In 1997, the Hubble Space Telescope dispatched a series of photographics of Vesta and its surrounding Vestal asteroids. Amongst those pictures was a revelation that at the southern hemisphere of Vesta's base, one of the largest craters in our solar system could be identified. This crater was then fully explored 14 years later with the launch of the Dawn space probe. In 2011, Dawn revealed more of the crater's appearance, as well as detecting a second massive crater underneath the first surface. To better differentiate the two cosmic basins, astronomers named the wider first crater Rhea Silvia, a vestal virgin and mother of Remus and Romulus, straight from Roman mythology like its home world's own namesake. The second crater was discovered during the same Dawn mission in 2011. This crater, aptly called Venonia, another Vestal Virgin of Roman law, was estimated to be 2 billion years old, twice as old as its larger counterpart in Rhea Silvia. Rhea Silvia is considered the more fascinating crater, as its origin most likely came from the result of a massive impact between Vesta and another body. In fact, this theoretical event was so destructive, it eliminated 1% of Vesta's entire volume, and the shattered remnants went on to form the other asteroids considered as part of the Vesta family. However, only 6% of the total mass ejected from Vesta during the impact makes up this family of similar asteroids. The other 94% of four Vestas missing 1% jettisoned into space as tiny particles that were pushed throughout the main belt due to radiation pressure. Some of those jettisoned fragments actually made it to Earth. In fact, so much of Vesta's remnants have launched towards our planet 
that it is estimated a little over 6% of all meteorites are lingering pieces of Vesta and products of Rhea Silvia's creation. Back on the asteroid surface, Rhea Silvia stretches 500 kilometers wide, or 311 miles, accounting for roughly 95% of Vesta's diameter. If one were to dive to the center of the crater, they would have to endure a 19 kilometer or 12 mile long journey. At the center, you'd find a mountainous peak that stretches even higher than the edges of the crater, towering as tall as 23 kilometers or 12 miles. It's currently the highest mountain in all of the solar system when judged from base to peak measurements, only rivaled by Olympus Mons, the gigantic shield volcano located on Mars. Even more perplexing than the two mammoth craters on Vesta is the accompanied series of parallel troughs that cover the equatorial regions of the asteroid, stretching from the northern and southern hemispheres away from our two great craters. Imagine looking over the Grand Canyon in Arizona of the United States of America, its red rock and wide chasms taking your breath away. Now imagine those canyons three times as deep and nearly twice as wide, encircling an entire celestial body from top to bottom. That is, the description of troughs located on Vesta's surface. Humongous canyons lining the asteroid's equator and inclined towards the northern hemisphere. The largest trough, called the Valley of Fossa, gets as wide as 22 kilometers, tracks 465 kilometers long, and has depths as deep as 5 kilometers. Saturnalia Fossa is the other major trough, located on Vesta's northern hemisphere. While its 370 km length runs shorter than Devalia's, the bulk of the trench stretches nearly 40 km wide, twice that of its more southern neighbour. The troughs are what sets Vesta apart from most other asteroids. They are features more likely to be seen on rock-based planets and moons, these discoveries by dawn in 2011 led astronomers to conclude that despite its size, Vesta is constructed with a crust, a mantle, and a core. With its irregular shape and size, it would be a prime candidate for a protoplanet. This means that at one point, Vesta was in contention to be the tenth planet in our solar system. So if Vesta has the skeleton of modern-day planets, what happened in its evolution to stop it from forming another Mars? or even another Earth-like world. The answer most likely hides in the deep chasms and craters, whose origin may turn out to be the death of Vesta's planetary aspirations. Since the initial detection of Vesta's major craters and troughs in 2011, astronomers have desperately sought the reason behind such cosmic anomalies. The presence of the craters would suggest a massive collision with a fellow asteroid, but the troughs make that matter more complicated. This is where experts realised Vesta was not like other minor planets, and made the conclusion that Vesta, like Earth and its moon, contained the three things that make a planet, a planet. Once this newfound fact was settled, it was time to take a look way, way back. The best scenario astronomers could come up with is that Vesta was once on its way to becoming a planet, before another asteroid smashed into the minor planet two billion years ago, creating the Venonia crater. Then, a billion years after that, another asteroid or other large object hurtling at dangerous speeds smashed into Vesta at almost the same location. This impact ripped an entire piece of the asteroid from its original body. Pieces ejected towards Earth and various parts of space. Soon after impact, the protoplanet formed what we now know as troughs, more specifically called graben. Graben are a special type of chasm formed when faults are moved within a planet's surface and the ground between them sinks like a canyon. A famous example of one on Earth is Death Valley, albeit much smaller than the ones on Vesta. While the origin of the troughs finally received a proper explanation, there are more irregularities and unique landmarks across Vesta that astronomers want to get a better look at. It truly is a remarkable outlier in our galaxy, and leaves us so much to wonder had two objects never crashed head-on with the minor planet. What if Vesta had avoided any contact and was able to form a fully developed planet? While it was much too far from the Sun to resemble Earth, it may still have harboured life with the right amount of hydrogen, oxygen and atmosphere. 
The possibilities are infinite, and a bit maddening with how little we know about life away from Earth right at this moment. Alas, the studies of Forvesta are far from over, as more and more probes are sent to the asteroid belt to unlock new clues into their origins. More information will be revealed about our second largest minor planet. Until then, all we can do is admire its spectacular preciousness, and the mysteries its troughs provide us. Thank you for joining us this week on Access Astronomy. Make sure to subscribe, hit that notification bell, and join us here next week where we will delve into more of the unknown of our vast universe.